Welcome to the Mac Talks, everybody. I'm your host, Scott Johnson. That dude is your co-host, Chase Hutchison. What's up, guys? We've got a special sit-in person with us today. Is he person? He's an intern. He's an intern and he's a person. And his name is Carlos. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? That's Carlos. Chase, tell everybody what the Mac Talks is all about. As always, if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or impactful leader, the Mac Talks are the vehicle that bring you the stories that you need to hear. Wow. How's that? That was good. How's that? That works. That works. So we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, no guest. We're going to do something, a little something, something. Chase, why don't you go ahead and uh, explain to everybody what we're going to do. So today is a special episode of the Mac Talks Rundown. We're going to run through a bunch of different business topics that are in the news. They're usually headlines, and we're going to break them down for you. We're going to give you the high and the low. We're going to give you what's real and what's fake. We're going to give you our opinions and so mm -hmm. on. So we're going to break it down. We're going to run it down for you today. Who is going to be the moderator of this? Carlosito. That one's going to be me. All right. Carlos, the intern, is going to be our moderator. He's going to be moderating this event. Yes. Please make sure it's a fair fight, both of you, <laughs> as you debate. <laughs> so the first order of business, you want to get right into it? Yeah, let's jump in. So the first one is Facebook at the F8 conference, talking about getting rid of likes on Instagram. Yep. Followers. So if you go on Facebook, I mean, if you go on Instagram, you won't be able to see anybody else's like counts. You won't be able to see um, followers in the future. But you, as a poster, you'll be able to see your own likes. Gotcha. So, Chase, what are you thinking? What's your views on that? You know that? what this reminds me of is right now there's a system going on in China. of It's like the social credit system. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And I think that's almost what that's almost like a this is a private version because that's run by the government, right? Yep. The China thing is run by the government, but yeah. this is gonna be privately run by Facebook, Instagram, all the guys, you know, the head honchos at social media. So when they take away likes, it's still gonna be like that social credit system, except you're, it's not gonna have as big of an impact on the I world. like it for this fact that they're making it seem like they're evening the playing field. Like they're trying to make it seem like <laughs> you know, the content is what matters and not the yeah. person that's posting it or yeah. the popularity behind it. I like it for that reason, but I know that that's not why they're doing it. Why are they doing it? They're doing it because they want people to talk about the fact that they're doing it. Oh, just for uh, attention. I mean, it's just publicity. <clears throat> Look at it. Like, they're not going to do that. No, no. But oh, there's no way they, in hell they, that their end they result is... They did it in is, Canada already. They're no, testing it's a it test. Out. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah, a test that out. they're never going to actually... I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe that we will accept that as society. No, mm. and what does it mean for businesses? Now, how are we going to track? You know, I'm, are, are businesses going to be allowed to see that information? Well, you can see the metric yeah. on your side. Okay. Yeah. You can see it on your side. It's just that when you're scrolling, you're not going to see that 50,000 people like this. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to give the post the credibility. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of the... Yeah, that's kind of the premises behind it. But I don't believe it. Like I don't believe that they would actually do that because I feel as though like people care too much about that type of stuff. And I think that it would turn people off too much and I don't think they're gonna do it. Yeah, they're selling it as a mental health uh, topic right now. Yeah. So trying to save people from too much comparative thinking. You know, I think it's cool. Like I like the concept behind it, but I don't think that they give a shit about anybody's mental health. Excuse my language, part of my French. <laughs> <laughs> like they really don't care about people's mental health, like the social yeah. media companies, they don't care. But a lot of people are talking about it and a lot of people are probably freaking out about it. You know what I mean? So I just think it's a more or less, I'm not saying they're not doing it. They're going to test it and they're going to do it as a study. But from the article that I read, it doesn't seem like that's going to be like uh, something that they're really looking forward to rolling out. I think it's something that mm. they're just going to kind of test out and see what happens well, and have a lot of people talk about it. We do need to get the ball rolling on figuring out exactly what social media is doing to our brains. We need yeah. to get the ball rolling on that and figure out exactly what it is that's changing because as you know, a lot of people are talking about how within you know our generation, the generations that are coming up, you know, depression, anxiety, all of that stuff are skyrocketing. Uh, and and now we spoke about how this might be just it's being reported more now, mm -hmm. and it's always been this way, and that we're more uh, desensitized to things. But I think that honestly. I think this is a good move by Facebook to actually, in the sense that I, maybe this won't work, 
but at least we're we're getting the conversation started and we're we're testing things out to yeah. see if if we can make positive changes. Yeah, to if they're, if they're media. doing it, if they're doing it for that reason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I mean, I, social media, I feel as though it's the same thing as what it's always been. Like, you know, it's a it's a status thing. The more likes you have, the more whatever. It's like the size of your house. It's like the size of your yeah. Except it's something that never gets turned off, and you can always look at it on your phone. Yeah. So it's increased that you know, a million times, basically. Yeah, you're comparing your friends and your likes to like Chris Pratt yeah. posting a photo with. Now, Zuckerberg is calling this under an, he's calling this under an initiative called Time Well Spent. Yeah. So he wants time on social media. Thanks for thanks for giving us that insight, Carlos. Oh, That's thank you, you're job. welcome. But <laughs> the, he's talking about how time on Facebook shouldn't just be negative and it shouldn't be about commenting on each other's stuff it should be about the content that's that's what it is <clears throat> right yeah. well it should be about help making people's lives better yep i just don't know what are the good things that i'm going to be doing on facebook that are really helpful to me and that i feel better about doing because a lot of times it's like memes sad news talking to somebody about something sad Somebody from high school, yeah. somebody from high school reaching out and be like, get away from me. What are you doing? Yeah. Well, you yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, it depends. But I, I'd be interested in what kind, what type of content he, uh, he wants to put the, like move Facebook in the direction of, mm -hmm. you know, how is he going to change the platform? Yeah. Cause I think people are going to be, uh, crappy no matter what. Yeah. All right. So what's the, uh, what's the next topic? Next topic. Um, the next topic, same thing. Facebook co-founder Chris Hughes calling for a breakup of the company. Um, so he's he's basically <clears throat> saying, what is he saying, that it's too big? Yeah, they have over 3 billion users. Um, they have a monopoly on the country. I mean, they have a monopoly on the social media site. They, uh, they get to decide what is inappropriate content, what's violent content. They get to decide what is free speech, what is not. And they've mishandled a lot of our secure information. I mean, this isn't news to anybody. Yep. But... Uh, yeah, he basically feels that Zuckerberg has no oversight. He has no boss and that the government needs to step in and do something. Yeah, so I agree with all the privacy and all that other type of stuff. Um, the, the only issue is, you know, I, can the government really get in there and figure out what's, I mean, there's almost the same problem with the government. Like, <laughs> you know, the government that's good at making decisions. <laughs> yeah, like what are they going to do? They're going to make the situation worse. And they're going to make it to where they can get our, <laughs> our privacy stuff probably more violated. <laughs> but no, I agree. Yeah. Like it is getting really, really big and it is the data that they're, that they're collecting and stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I just don't know that I trust the government going in there and, and doing it. But I do think that they should be held um, where did I see something in the article saying something about how they should be held uh, accountable the same way, um, like a, I'm not really sure what it is, like a commodity would be Yeah. to where if you're, you know, you have to be held to certain standards, like they should be fined. I mean, there has to be things in place where they're fined for, you know, for data breaches, right? Yeah, yeah. They have to be yeah. getting fined for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but I think maybe the fine needs to be something that's really huge. So where it's like, they'll really care about doing it. It seems like they don't really care. Well, Chase, back in the, think? back in the day, they did this to the oil companies in the U S because they were getting too big. I forget what the name was for it, but they standard were getting oils. Yeah. Standard oil was, was basically controlled the, the oil supply for the entire con country. And it was a private company, so this guy could do whatever he wants. I think the solution is bring other, break it up. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, let's break it up, but let's diversify it and split it up into a bunch of little guys, little small companies. Yeah. Like, think about how much of a market share Facebook has of social media in our attention. Yeah. Facebook, Facebook and Instagram have... I mean, I gotta, I, I'm just coming up with numbers, but it's gotta be like over 50% of the market share of the internet. Like, yeah. I think I saw a stat that the average person spends about five hours a day on the internet or on looking at a screen. Yeah. That's yeah. So, crazy. So that's, so yeah, I think we need to break it up and then, and then put, I don't think we should put the government in charge though. I think we should break off pieces. Yeah, but the government's the only to, thing that could do that, though. Who else is going to do that? No, the the government should break Facebook it up, but the, they shouldn't. Oh yeah, yeah, they shouldn't be the one. Be the controllers. Hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. they wouldn't be, but they would be the one deciding how to break it up. That's the problem. Yeah. I uh, yeah, but yeah. So, somebody needs to do that though. Yeah. One of the, who's going to do it? I agree. I mean, unless Mark Zuckerberg voluntarily goes, which All right, is not, gonna which do. is never going to happen. <laughs> no. 
is not going to So we need a legal authority. Yeah, one of the things that Chris Hughes brought up as a part of the breakup was to get rid of Facebook's acquisition of Instagram and WhatsApp. So I don't I might I might not have a problem with that because mm-hmm. I get it. Now you're bringing in other platforms and you're just a big bully that can just scoop up any platform and then now you have that data too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like I get that. Like they do they are kind of, you know, so maybe, yeah, but he wanted to go really much further than that as well. Like, I think so. I don't really know. He never really says it in specifics. I want to know how it works. I saw this great comment underneath it was like, oh, well, what do we do? We we give like a couple million people to MySpace, a couple million people to Friendster. I mean, is that how? It... That's kind of like what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know right. what the hell Friendster is. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is Friendster? It's, uh, it's for back back in uh, back in the day. And, yeah, oh, two, okay. When MySpace yeah. was a thing, it yeah. was like it was like the Facebook or the Twitter, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah. It's That's so Twitter. convenient um, to have a monopoly as a social network. No, but yeah, this is a tricky look, it's gonna come to a head. The government at some point. can't catch up with this these type of this type of technology. Like they're not going to. Yeah. They they just can't. Like I don't understand, you know, like what it's gonna take, but it's really hard for them to catch up to this. And it's gonna get much worse before it gets better. But I don't even know. I'm not even sure about my stance on it. Like I get it, they're too big, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. All right. All right. Next one. Next one. <laughs> On to the next thing. This one's actually kind of related to that. Um, so I saw these videos of people in Japan who are living in cyber cafes. Yeah. So a cyber cafe, um, they're basically like cubicles, uh-huh. and you have hundreds of them in a row. And they're six feet long, maybe three or four feet wide. You could touch all the walls. There's just a computer, and they have internet access. And there's um, just over 5,000 people currently spending half of their week inside the cyber cafe, and the numbers are rising. So they live in there? They live in there, yeah. So the, with the video that I was watching that you, that you sent, um, it shows this guy just sitting at, the, at, at his desk. Like, where does he sleep? Is there a separate sleeping quarters? On the floor quarters? in front of that, usually. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there's no ceilings on these things. These are just these tiny cubicles. What's the size of them? They're like six feet long, it looks like, in the video. By like three yeah. feet wide, it looks yeah. like? Yeah, yeah. And they say that you can hear other people and... Yeah, there's no... Uh, yeah, you can hear other people. Some There was a woman in the video who said that she liked being alone, but when she's too alone, it feels bad. So she likes like hearing ambient noises of other people around. You know, and it's, I mean, are you smelling people's body gas too? <laughs> like I would imagine you are. Yeah. Like that other yeah. woman. So I don't, I'm not sure I understood the woman part. So was she like a massage person? You can then bring like, what is the guest policy when you have a cyber cafe? <laughs> oh, little, I don't know. Little thing there. Like, because that, that woman was doing massages and yeah. I don't know if they were. I don't think she was there. Like, there was some implication there. that the massages might've been on the shady side, like a Bob Crafty. <laughs> Yeah. That's known as a crafty from now on, by the way. <laughs> whenever whenever you get that certain type of massage, call it a crafty, which I don't get. But when I'm crafty's age, maybe I will. I don't know. Mm. I don't know for right now, I don't know. Yeah. But sh- there were she was talking about how, you know, she's working. She works. What is it called? The night world. Yeah, yeah. What the it's hell is the <laughs> night world? Yeah. I just automatically assumed something shady that involved sex, the night world. Yeah. So then she's talking about doing massages, but then they showed all these like sex pictures. Mm-hmm. So I was a little confused by that. And then the guy comes in and I guess she has a massage table inside of there. I don't really know. So yeah. it's just really freaking weird. Yes. Like, so don't, don't you think this is the precursor to, you, ever, you know, the movie Minority Report, like everybody's yeah. spending all their times all their time in these like little pods the pod. where you can be in a virtual reality instead of real reality. And what, tell me this, what is the, what, why wouldn't you choose to be in a virtual world rather than the real one? It's a fun world. Why wouldn't you? I'm going to yeah. tell you why, because I have somebody like you three cubicles over from me <laughs> freaking talking all this bro shit being like, bro, bro, are you coming over? <laughs> Yo, my neighbor, bro, my neighbor. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I'm gonna like, miss that. That's gonna be, a, but it's I, a little yeah. bit. But I it's, think it's, you're it's, seeing this already in these these, in in where is this? Uh, I think Japan. it's Japan. Yeah. I think it's you're uh, seeing it's bad. this already. It's really bad. Do you it's think detachment that, from reality. Yeah. So you hear that's people never like good. so. Let me just make sure I understand this correctly. So they have these tiny, just to give everybody a visual. Yeah. They have all these tiny little boxes that are like three by six. Mm-hmm. They have like advertisements all over the outside of them. And of course, in true Japan fashion, they ha- they're they all lit up. So 
the LEDs. And you can, I would imagine you can, you know, they have common space for like bathroom and kitchen, you know, like she's, you know, mm-hmm. cooking something. I got to be honest with both people that I saw, and I'm not trying to be mean, but with both people that I saw, I don't know if they can get toothpaste. They look like trolls. They, <laughs> dang. I mean, that's, I mean, look, that's they, a little rough. Uh, it's rough, but listen, if you sit in front of a blue screen all yeah, day. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You no longer need. But I don't think that the girl sits in front of the blue screen, though. The girl does something different. I mean, she's bringing people in there and doing massages and stuff. So she's a true entrepreneur. This okay. One All right. Well, I respect that. That She's not a troll. It's kind of gross, I, though, because this is what I'm saying is that you have to hear you. You're going to hear other you're going to hear other people. Right. So you're going to hear, you know, maybe they're having some sort of relations. I don't know. But you're going to hear that like very mm-hmm. clear. Right. But, you're going to hear you're going to you're going to smell people. You're going to smell their body gas. Mm-hmm. Like that's disgusting. Well, I don't know. I just think uh, it's pretty goddamn gross. Yeah. But Scott, yeah. they have different we all know this like they have different customs over there. But you like, say they, this is where everything stand, is going. This I but I think yes, I think that's that's the trajectory they are on. But will it make it over here and really get into our lives? I'm not sure. I don't, don't think, think you so? could sell Americans All I know, on that. Yeah, no, we're too We're, we're too, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, well, like countries like that. Yeah. Let me give you a selling point here. So over there, um, it's also known as um, cyber homelessness because of the re- it's mostly it's the ah. cost. So you have, it's 14,000 to 24,000 yen, which you both already know, is <laughs> about 12 to $21 a night. So it's about uh, three, cyber homelessness. That's a whole three hundred and sixty dollars uh, for a, probably. And a the month. sad part about this is somebody's making probably a lot of money off of it, right? I mean, they're taking a gigantic building people. and they're cutting it down. They're literally like leasing it per square inch, more or less. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody is really going to be making a killing yep. at this thing right here. Yeah, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I can only imagine something like that. You know. It's a cultural you, thing. I, like me coming home after having broken symmetry, like crushing some burritos from broken symmetry. Yeah, I don't want to be within, I don't want to be on the Lerto. same floor as you. Exactly. I don't want to be on the second floor. That's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so okay. anyway, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Next one, Patagonia. So um, there was a woman, her name is Bina Kim. And she posted, she had something on Twitter where she was ordering a bunch of Patagonia vests for her business. Yeah. And Patagonia refused to sell them the vest. Mm -hmm. They shut her down. Why? Because she's too corporate or they don't like what she stands for? (laughs) Yeah. They don't like what the business stands for. And uh, here's a quote from Patagonia. They said, it will focus on B corporations, companies that deal with the charity element or have uh, supported to causes like the community or the environment. If they're B certified corporations, and I didn't know what B certified meant, um, but B certified is like the organic, like a USDA organic seal, but for businesses, you know, they're they're wow. yeah, yeah yeah they're socially responsible. They're socially responsible. So I think this Why is, is everything being like a judgment thing. But now? but but I do think that that is a good move because you want to support it, it. It first of all, it's your right as a as a business owner. It is to only sell to you people can refuse, that you can refuse. You can do whatever you want. And they're saying, oh, okay, I'm only going to sell my stuff to companies that are socially and environmentally conscious and, yeah. and responsible. And, uh, you know, I think that's a, that's a, that's a solid move. Um, it's a particularly really. big hit for, um, Silicon Valley because, well, in the show Silicon Valley, they always wear those, uh, felt Patagonia vests. You always see Jeff Bezos. No, you know what it's for? It's, it's Wall thing. Street, Wall yeah, Street Wall executives. Street, like that's like the it's a uniform. Finance, it's a finance bro. Yes, yeah. finance, finance bro. bro look. Yes, corporate bro. Corporate bro. Yeah, they yeah. don't want corporate bro. They want corporate bro with good causes behind. Yes, it. yes. Mm-hmm. But that's just like so. Why can't like you're trying to tell me these rich bastards can't get like they can get the coats? Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> they're gonna get the coats. <laughs> yeah, like what? Like Patagonia is gonna have the police where they're the Patagonia police where they're gonna be like they're gonna go down the Wall Street and be checking out people's Facebook and be like you were hunting over the weekend. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> give us your vest, right? Well, I mean, but the Patagonia police running down, stripping vests off people. I think they said they would honor the contracts that they currently have. <laughs> mm. um, I don't know. I'm torn there. on this. I'm torn on this. Uh, this whole thing. I'm not really sure. I think yeah. what it's going to lead to is that it's going to cost more money, right? I mean, they're going to charge more money for it. Their sales are going to go down, right? Or no. I think you're going to charge. So like a corporate bro can go out there like, so what happens when they go buy it in the store? What? Oh, 
I think they're they talking would still... about just labeling their company name on the on the vest. Yes, that's like what they promotional yeah, yeah, yeah. products. So if like... you buy them in bulk, <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I'm. We order should totally take Mac it to Media. the streets. Let's go to Wall Street. Let's actually ask people if they're worthy of their Patagonia address. <laughs> dress. <laughs> their, their vest. I said dress. <laughs> what do you do to be? What have you of done for vest? the planet? Yeah, like lately? what have you done? Have you? How many? How many? How many? Ant eaters and water buffalo have you saved? Yeah, <laughs> from from the from the planet. But you know they have hands. lots of um, to be like I buy I buy my kids vineyards vine all the time. You know what's funny is I that vineyard good. vine is going to come in and scoop all that up because they're like, oh, we make the same vest. Well, they no huh? no they actually have that. They've already Patagonia is actually going with their style by doing that. I think I've never seen. A oh you vine. oh really you saying so you you're saying vineyard vine <laughs> no. They use that wow. same concept. Wow, Carlos, that that I'm could be actually, the next topic. I'm actually jealous. Let's that talk it, about that topic right there. I'm out of touch. Holy, I've seen the whales, dude. That's, that's all it. you need to see. Just know that the they're doing, they're killing it. They're doing awesome. They're yeah. saving whales. Yeah, you know. So they do all right. Stuff for so whales. back to the Patagonia thing, um, also referred to as Patagucci. Yep. Um I don't know. I mean, I guess they can do what they want, right? Yeah, I like it when people. I, I, I like it when, I, I'm going to go off on a limb and say I support this. I think I think that it's the right move. I think you got to take a stand when you're a large company and you have a lot of money, a lot of assets, a lot of resources. That and and it's also Scott. It's the behind their name. Like Patagonia is a region in Argentina, I believe. It's a mountain range, mm-hmm. right? And and it's they're all about like protecting and, and maintaining that area and keeping it pristine and keeping the earth. So I mean, they're kind of putting their money where their mouth is, right? Because they're they're gonna they're gonna see a, a loss in sales. Yep. But they're doing it because they believe in it, and I gotta say, that's they want their image to remain yeah, with the. That's outdoors. a boss move. I mean. All right. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. So the last one is an article um, about this guy named David Epstein. I don't know. Named Brian Kane. He trains. UFC champions, Olympic medalists. Is that medalists. advice from the internet? Yeah. Did you just add that one in? I didn't see that one yesterday. Uh, no. Don't be sliding stuff in on me. Oh, I slide stuff at the Easy. last minute. Easy. Don't be talking about sliding stuff in either. What? It's not that type oh. of podcast. All right. <laughs> all right. So, um, um, all right. So go ahead. Yeah. Pick so it up. Brian, Tell us about this guy. Brian Kane. He trains UFC champions, Olympic medalists, Cy Young Award winners in um, mental strength, mental toughness. So his uh, main claim to fame right here is this list of things called the average or elite mindset. So I was just thinking maybe we could go through some of the average versus the elite mindset and see what you guys think. Yeah, go ahead. So an average mindset starts with the list is make an excuse. Elite makes it happen. An average, he sees confidence as a feeling or elite knows confidence as an action or uses the phrase have to or he uses the phrase gets to or wants to what do you guys think so far i hear you yeah i mean it's all in the language that you that you speak um yeah what do you think chase i think i'm i mean uh, you know it's thinking like the glass is half full versus the glass is half empty right i mean it's just having a better mindset and feel that you so one seems this. to be more rooted in reality though right so yeah. one is like confidence is an action and then the other person is like confidence is a feeling so one person's like yep. abstracting themselves from what's going on and the the elite person the person with the elite mindset thinks this is this is a thing that i'm going to do i'm going to create it i'm going to put it into being you know what I mean? There's, and that's the difference between somebody who makes excuses and somebody who actually does yeah, it. I mean, that's really what it is. It's the left side is like, but, it's excuses. But there's, mm-hmm. here's the thing. Is the whole that, thing is excuses. A, a lot of us like to think that we're logical and uh, all the time. And then sometimes we feel emotions, but it's actually the other way around. We're mostly emotional. And then sometimes we think logically. Yes. And so the person who is the elite mindset it, it, it assumes the logic, that logic is the center of their thoughts and then they just feel experienced. And I don't think that's, I don't think they're being completely truthful with themselves sometimes. Yeah. I think a lot of these are just aphorisms that they can just say to make themselves, to put themselves in that mindset that they need. But I think on a, on a personal day to day basis, like they're not, you know, is David Goggins always, <laughs> always like doing running Yo. 200 miles? Like, no, David Goggins is eating nutter butters and taking a shit sometimes. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Like he yes. is. 
I, he an ice cream? I like, like yeah, David but... Goggins and those like um, motivational people, but there's a lot of like cyborgness to their advice where it's yeah. like, if you ever feel down, you are wrong. Yeah. You know, you're bad. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I don't know. That but guy's so, a psycho. He obviously, <laughs> he obviously, is obviously yeah. what he's saying he's doing. I mean, the guy's a freaking psychopath. Yeah. But I hear you. It's like sometimes it's just like a bit too much. It's like there's no way you can be at that 100% of the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah, we got to you know? aim for that. You know, yeah. we got to aim for that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's uh, some other things. Uh, oh, average. wait. There's one thing I wanted to talk about. I do think that that is like an emerging market where there's going to be more like career coaches, uh, social oh, media yeah. coaches, mindset coaches. I think that's like emerging as like a bigger market. Yeah. Let's see how those industries do when they, when they take away the likes and the views. Yeah. Let's see what they do. Their whole entire <laughs> industry is built upon that. So not to yeah. jump back in a topic, but no, no, no. It's, yeah. These are, these are, these connect. So anyway, yeah, go there's ahead. Tons. Right. Um, yeah. So average says it's impossible. Elite says it's going to be very difficult or an average feels sorry for themselves. An elite says they are so focused on others that they don't have time to feel sorry for themselves. Mm. You know, um, here's a good one. Uh, focuses on what they can't control. The average elite focuses on what they can control. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's all good stuff. You know, <clears throat> so it's definitely, it's yeah. definitely all good stuff, but and it's the, that's the whole thing is what you're saying though. I mean, I agree with what you say is that, you know, we think more emotional. I know I do. I know I'm guilty of that. Yeah. But you I know. mean, also there's a lot of, I think it's, it's helpful to point out that there's a lot of, uh, uh, crossovers between someone who's like an elite athlete and someone who's an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like a lot of this is stuff that you could, you could. Yeah. I mean, you guys are in sales. I mean, all the time you face probably oh my failures God. We just, and all it's, sometimes we just get, you know, let's get our rear ends kicked. Yeah. How do you keep going after that? You just got to just brush it off and get yep. back up again. Yeah. It's a new day. Keep, yeah. It's a new day. If, if you if you let the day before you, you gotta get affect small wins. who you are now, yeah, you got to get small wins to help. Kind Some of, of his clients are uh, George St. Pierre. Um, who else we got? Jake Arrieta, pitcher, pitcher for the Phillies. Uh, David Prince, Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Murray. Does he have business clients too? I would imagine he does, right? I think so. Yeah. No, it's definitely definitely pretty interesting. Maybe we should get one, huh? We should <laughs> you should get you should get some motivational speakers. Try it out. Yeah. We need a Tony we're gonna Robbins take, type. We're going to take more we're going to actually start to use this more. This is good. This is a good article. I like this. Okay. We're going to use this more. All right. All right, what else cool. we got? Is that it? Yeah, those are the last 5 for the talks. All right. So then uh what else are we doing, Chase? With our new format. All right, so this is a segment of the show called Mac Move or Whack Move. And what we're going to do, we're going to introduce a topic and then we're going to decide between ourselves whether it's an action that would be classified as a Mac Move yeah, yeah. or an action that would be classified as a Whack Move. And gotcha. it's kind of self-explanatory. So. Yes, it is. But does Carlos get a vote or no? Yeah, um, I yeah, I'm a, I'm a citizen. Sure? I, I want him. I want him to just. <laughs> you want to be unbiased? Is he oh, registered? Oh yeah, I could be impartial. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. <laughs> All right, go ahead. What do we got? What's okay, the first one? First one is Yora. It's a British pet food brand, and their claim to fame is that the pet food is made of insects, more specifically grubs. What do Chase? you think? Mac move or whack move? You know what? I'm going to say Mac move. I'm going to say Mac move. Mac also. move. Capitalize yes. on that market. Why? Because there's people out there that are going to buy this. Is it good for the environment? Uh, probably better than, probably better than if we were farming live animals that act like like cows and stuff, and then feeding that to dogs. They're selling it it's as an. It's probably it's a win win because there's probably a market out there for it, so they can make some money. And it's good, for, it's good for your dogs, and it's good for the environment. Yeah. Mac move. Yeah. High in protein, right? Yep, high in protein. They say they use Mac only move. 2% of the land and 4% of the water that it takes to produce uh, the meat. I was surprised to know that pets are estimated to consume 20% of the world's meat and fish. Yeah. What? That's a big number, right? Mr. <laughs> Don't read the article. That's, That's insane. You were so blown away by that. It is so blatantly obvious that you did not click on this article. Uh, and you did no show prep. Anywho, <laughs> anywho. Uh, but somehow Matt, I knew more about the Matt social move. media. Carlos. All right. 
So you guys are Mac? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, this one's a personal gripe, so Uh-oh. if any of my friends see this. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, we've got uh, the last blockbuster is in Bend, Oregon. No, hold on. Can what? we take it back? Is it a Mac move or a whack move, the dog food? For you. Yeah. You get oh, a vote. Oh, for me? Yeah. Oh, I get a vote? Yes. Wow, you just I'm a said citizen. That. You're a registered citizen, <laughs> bro. Like, Mac <laughs> move or whack move? Jesus Christ. Going over here. All right, what do you got? Oh, what do you got? I'm such, such a Mac move on the, on all right, the, uh, okay. on the other thing. Next, okay, all right, next cool. one. Let's right. go. But I won't eat it. Let's go. We're going to be getting our... Um... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? Would you feed Scrappy this? Hell yeah, yeah I'd feed Scrappy you? that. Okay, I mean, right. I don't know. I'd like to see the reviews first. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. on Amazon, though, because they got fake-ass reviews. But anyway. If he likes it, then why not? Right? Well, because yeah. it has to be healthy for him. So yeah, I need if he to likes know. it and it's I need healthy. to know what type of grubs. Where are the grubs coming from? Are the grubs coming from China? <laughs> yeah. Do they have lead in them? Yes. Like, are the, where are, are they, they making being the grubs? shipped overseas Exclusively from with lead. Vietnam? <laughs> I want to know where the grubs come from. I mean, listen. I think it's a Mac move. It's a great idea. I love it. Scrappy's my baby boy. I need to do a little more research before I decide that I'm going okay. to feed that into his pretty little mouth. And that's fair. Yeah. That's, all right. Okay. So okay. Mac all around. I feel okay. like there should be a buzzer or something that plays when we get all Mac. Yes. <laughs> so for the so this one's the personal gripe. The last blockbuster is in uh, is in Bend, Oregon, and it's owned by a small business. Uh, these people that used to own a, a different video store. That doesn't matter. But you could so Mac move or whack move. Road trip to the last blockbuster? Do you guys want to do that? Wait, that's the question. Yeah. I thought whether I thought whether or not this store is still in existence is whether it would be a Mac move or a whack move. And uh, my comment yeah, is Yeah, that's that's cool as well, but uh I kinda wanna go. Here's the thing. Bro. Like if I went, I'm not I'm, I'm I don't think that I'm gonna be ultra, ultra friendly. I'm gonna be making fun of people because honestly, I cannot describe anymore. This is a serious whack move. Like I'm gonna be honest with you, like Get a life. Do you get a life? You want to converse? You want to? What the hell town is this in? Bend, Oregon. Bend, Oregon. More like That's Bend it. over Oregon, right? Yeah. They I have, mean, this is the biggest festivals. whack move. I mean, I guess Bruh. it's a community thing. Like, yeah. I don't know, but it's a whack move. I feel as though you can do something like this without having the blockbuster. Is blockbuster corporate still in existence? I don't think they're the last ones. No, but like Blockbuster yeah. as a corporation, like they're yeah, they no longer gone. there, they right? So how can they operate under their whatever? And then the video shows yeah. the woman, she goes and buys the videos. Yeah, the, she goes and buys videos goes at buys Block, the, I mean, at, at, at a, uh, Best Buy. At Best Buy <laughs> and then puts them on here and at then Block rents Best them out to people. Yeah. I don't know. That's the only Chase. place she could get them. Is she making money? I mean, they're open. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there is something like scarcity. Like if there's only one blockbuster and people want to go there for a nostalgia feeling, it's almost like a theme park or a music park. Like in the <laughs> sense where you, what you is, show, though. but that's not what it is. Yeah. But also that's not the question. The question is Mac move or whack move. Go visit Bend, Oregon, Oregon to go to the last blockbuster. And I'm going to say this. Bruh, if you're going, <laughs> bruh, if you're going on that. a Just road trip, bruh. bruh, I shouldn't even have to answer this, but it, it, if you're going on a goddamn road trip to Bend, Oregon, to go see a blockbuster, bro, you better you better turn around and, and, and check yourself into the closest bruh, bruh. mental ward. Oh you're like, because wait, bro, you want to blah 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 blah. Bro, you need help. What? You need you need help. Well, look, look let me. Let I me think see. Carlos. I, can't, I, think, I have a selling I have a point for you guys. I have a feeling Carlos. he's gonna say Mac move. I think he is. I have a feeling he's, think he is. I have a selling point for you guys bend oregon yeah right, was previously the only metropolitan area west of the mississippi without a public bus system is that the reason why <laughs> they're all stuck home bro i blocked are out they still, <laughs> i blocked on, out are they st- <laughs> Do they have us? Do they still not have no, one? They, they got one now. They're well, on of the course way they up. do. You got to get to the blockbuster, <laughs> right? I mean, holy. Uh, all right. right. So, okay. So I'm. Uh, so all around, what do you think? Whack, Mac. Yeah, definitely yeah, whack. whack, move. whack I already said it. I'm not whack. changing. I'm a it. Mac move. So if anybody wants to come with me. <laughs> Please let me know. I think oh you're going to be on we'll, your own. We'll gear him up. We'll send him down there. For the content. Yeah, yeah. we'll send him for the content. We'll go to harvest yeah. the content. And that and I would say Mac move on going there to harvest the yeah. content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, oh, sure. that's a Mac move because we might do that. But yeah. All right. Next Otherwise, no. <laughs> so Mac move or whack move, something we've been talking about in the office a lot, seeing this on restaurant menus. Yes. The phrase, airline chicken. <sighs> This one is a personal We've one, been huh? pounding this one for probably a week. <laughs> the first time that Chase and I saw it, um, it, if you asked me this question after the first time I saw it, I would have said whack move. 
But you know what? I'm still going to say whack move. I'm still going whack move on this one because <laughs> just because one dummy decides to do it doesn't mean everybody else has to decide to do it. So we first saw this at one of our spots that we go to, Prime Pub. Shout out to Simi. What up, Simi? So we were at... <laughs> So we were at Prime Pub and we see the menu and it says airline chicken and I pointed it out to Chase and I'm like, who would ever call it that? I didn't realize that that was like a theme that was going around. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Chase informed me that the other place down the road yep. has airline chicken too. Yep. And all it really is is just the cut of the chicken. It's just the leg it's of the chicken. chicken right? breast with a little drumstick bone sticking out. Yeah. 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 And it looks but, like a little wing. But I mean, honestly, airline chicken... W w w whack like airline chicken doesn't taste good it sounds like a piece of chicken that's boiled in a bag like it sounds kind of a little <laughs> yeah. bit on the disgusting side it's amazing that people still use it apparently it comes from no it just got re it just got re i don't know if it used to be used yeah I, it just got kicked up again trust yeah. me yeah. i eat at a lot of yeah. restaurants yeah and i would notice airline chicken yeah yeah. Right? So. And it just happened to be like Mother's Day, too. So it's like a Mother's Day staple meal, I guess. I'm just putting that together now because I've never seen this before. And then all of a sudden, Mother's Day weekend rolls around and I see two restaurants have airline chicken. Wow, really? I hate to agree with Scott on everything. I always like to kind of be <laughs> a stick in his, a thorn in his side and disagree on some yeah. things. But I have to agree with him on this. This is a terrible marketing move. It's a, you, yeah. you label, you, you know, your, your $28 special meal as airline chicken which is just colloquially known as the worst cuisine is stuff Anything that you eat airline. on a flight yeah. like everybody knows that would somebody serve airline water <laughs> it's like no because you don't even drink the coffee when you fly in an airline yeah. <laughs> because i don't know if you know this carlos don't drink coffee on an airline why not because the water like it doesn't the, the lines don't ever get cleaned oh God. so they have um bacteria lots of crap builds up inside of them it's just disgusting uh, yeah but that's anyway horrible. that's a whole different subject for another mac or whack but i think it's whack you think it's whack how about you airline chicken uh whack for sure what are Change some other things name. that people could come up with it that also are horrible it has names a... what's another horrible name for something like um i think just spam just sounds like it's bad yeah. and it is bad spam and you called chicken. it spam yeah you're like this is a bad like Scrapple, Scrapple sounds bad and it is bad. Just be very careful <laughs> right now. Be very careful where you you're have. treading right now. No, but I'm saying like, what were some of the other ones that you said? Like gas station sushi? Yeah. Like imagine if you saw on a menu, gas station sushi. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're you're not going to want to order it. That's what I think about. That's on the when same. When I think of, yeah. Yeah, same level playing field. Like at the gas station, they don't call it that. It's just what it is, <laughs> but they don't put that in front of it. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, mm -hmm. if you went, if a restaurant had sushi and they were offering a sh sushi that was a special, would they put gas station sushi in front of it? No, they wouldn't. No. So why would you put airline? Yeah. And what what else? Uh, what could it be? A Dude, subway taco? No. Uh, How about a subway taco? Subway, or a subway oh, like? I'll yeah, tell yeah. you what they have. Street cart taco. They have uh, hard boiled eggs at gas stations. Oh god. You ever seen those? What about yeah, the guy I that I, I just go? Who in their right mind is buying this? We should have a segment but there's people where we buying eat it. those. Oh man, what else is there? <laughs> All right. So airline chicken, stupid, stupid name. Whack move. Whack move. Right. Whack, move. Whack move. This Next. one I feel like is going to be a fast one. Uh, Planet Fitness is moving into all of the old, or moving into some of the old Toys R Us stores. Also Sears stores, but so what do you think? Planet Fitness moving into Toys R Us. I mean, Ruining I guess. I, I guess it's a. I guess it's a it's a it's a Mac move. I mean, they're they're gonna buy it cheap on the dollar, right? I mean, Toys R Us is probably trying to sell all these units. Yeah, right. But yeah. it's a whack move because there's gonna be more Planet Fitnesses around. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're growing really fast. They said uh, in a couple of years they could possibly reach four thousand gyms nationwide. So wow. basically, their model is to offer super super cheap get 10,000 people to register for the gym and only 300 show up. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the 300 yes. that do show up don't work out aggressively. Yeah. They 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 pussyfoot around the gym. Yeah. is what they do. And I'm not somebody that like I'm not a big guy. You know what I mean? Like I'm not somebody that makes noises at the gym or anything like that. So I'm not so, like a beefcake that likes to throw around a lot of weight. But like, I hate everything about Planet Fitness's model. Yeah, yeah I'm not Chase. Yeah. yeah. I'm not Chase um, that Thank you. Pushes um, myself to want to throw up and just yeah grunts and yeah no um i think that there's a lot of money being made right now on people just paying subscription services that they don't use oh yep. for sure i think that if you can get someone to sign up for something once 
you're you can make a lot of money. Like just sign up. Okay, it's uh, three dollars a month. I would it's $5 love to know the stats because I know that they know it. They know that the stats are if if five thousand people sign up, you know, eleven hundred are gonna cancel the membership. Mm -hmm. Three thousand are just not gonna use it. And two thousand are going to go to the gym or whatever, whatever it may be. Like yeah. they know the metrics because they have it down. Yeah. And these places are huge, and they're only charging twenty bucks a month. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's kind of the most perfect business model because I feel like it's the only place where you could just say, "Hey, do you want to just give us money and we don't have to do anything?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they so, do want them to show up though because they they, when do. they show up, they they buy possibly products from them, t-shirts or yeah. merch or 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 there's no, they know, get protein. the people that show up to buy that stuff. No, they get them to show up two months out of the year, January and February. That's when <laughs> yeah. they get them to show up. And they offer them an even cheaper price, yeah. which for the record, I want to state, I hate the fact that gyms offer a cheaper price to get people to come in. And then those people aren't going to use the gym. They're only going to use it for two months. And they get a cheaper price than I do. And I yes. use the gym all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. I should be the one who's taken care of. So yeah. anyhow, so what do you think? Mac or whack? I'm going to go on the business side of it. I think it's a Mac move because I know they're going to steal these properties for cheap. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that's a Mac move. But Planet Fitness in general as a corporation, they're just a whack. They're, they're whack. So yeah. I'm going to go with Mac move on the business side, but I don't like the Planet Fitness model. But if they're making money, good for them. Yeah. What do you think, Chase? Um, I don't know. It's tough because I really think that it's a whack move because there's going to be – because I, I don't think that they can sustain this – I think that all of these Sears and Toys R Us places are cursed, and anybody <laughs> wow. that moves in there is Bad gonna fail. And also, Planet Fitness is just—I'm just gonna say whack move out of principle. All right, you I'm don't sorry. like the color purple. I'm, I'm just gonna say whack move. I'm gonna say Mac <laughs> just to be dead to center. Because you agree with me, it's a good business move. They're gonna get yeah. them for cheap. Yeah. Like no, Toys I mean, R Us is so upside down right now, like, and they own those those properties still, guaranteed. So yeah, yeah. I mean. Unless well, they're leasing. I don't know. I don't know what Toys R Us is. I think they so. should keep the giraffe signs, though. That would be better. People would go. I think Toys R Us would still be there if they didn't make their place look like a goddamn warehouse and didn't have any interaction with people. <laughs> you know, I mean, their downfall was when they said, oh, we're just going to outsource everything to Amazon. Yeah. And then all they did was train people to, on how to look for things cheaper on the internet. Like mm. they are known for being most expensive. So if you're super expensive, you better big, bring people into the store. But there's nothing going on in the store. Absolutely anything. Yeah. So like oh, you there's can't... so much they could have done too. I used to love it as a kid. Though. Yes. Nostalgic. Oh yes. my god, I used to love going there. But yeah. I. But now that I'm older, I'm like, oh my gosh. There's yeah. so this much they could have done. Horrible. There's so much they could have done. This looks horrible. Dude, all it takes is one smart guy to to come in and be like, hey, let's leverage all this fun. You know. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and get more kids but in the did. store. They did. They had a bunch of old people. I guarantee you. You get Gary Vee There's in there to so, shake I can it think up. of a million different incentives to get more kids in there, you know? All right, so easy. next topic. Right. Um, the last topic. Last topic. Party City. Closing. I find this one to be very interesting. Yeah? Yeah. What do you like about All it? All right, well, well hang well, on. Go, hang on. Go ahead, read Explain it. Explain it first, and then... Uh, they're closing 45 stores this year among a massive global helium shortage. Apparently, they've been closing 10 stores a year since, like, 2012. Oh. Yeah. So it's not really the helium, then? No, it's not really just the it sounds helium. Sounds like that's a big-ass excuse. Yeah, yeah, so the helium is happening at the same time that... Uh, that they're, they're already yeah, crapping That the they're bed. closing a lot Ooh. of stores. Funny, because I've always kind of talked about how the hell do these places make money? And people would always tell me, oh, they make a killing because of the fact that... They buy things for pennies. They sell it for, you know, dollars. So, yeah. But yeah. do they have the turnover? Like, can you have the turnover? These places are warehouses. You see the size Massive. of these buildings? Yeah. yeah. They're huge. How many people napkins. are really going there? I mean, I've been into a party store three times in my life. I've spent 30 bucks, I think, total. I don't, you know. Yeah. I, don't I mean, know. I don't know. I think that, honestly... Like you, like you said, they make a lot of money because they're selling things for dollars that they bought for pennies. But then think of all the times of year that they're probably getting, you know, a lot of business like Christmas, Halloween, Hanukkah, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, uh, anytime you have a party, anybody's birthday. Memorial Day, like they sell fireworks like there's yeah. I mean. So really quickly, um, I think how how what are, what are, we're deciding whether it's a Mac move or a whack move that they're closing. I don't really think they have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know where the Mac move or whack move comes in on this. Like is it Mac move or whack move that there's no more helium? I don't like what's what are we doing here with this one? I'm a little confused by it. Um, 
Yeah, so there's the global helium shortage. I guess you could say a Mac move or a whack move uh, to their decision to, to keep of closing stores. <laughs> No, no, they no. have no money. Mac, no, like, Scott. Oh Scott. no, it's a well. It's obviously a Mac move because they would be complete idiots to try to stay open and not close the stores, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. No, but is it a Mac? I don't let's, know that let's this refine one it. fell pro- in the proper category. No, 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 but I think this one was meant for let's the Let's refine it real quick. What Mac move or whack move? Be an owner of a party city store. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> well, what Mac about, move or whack move? Because it's kind of weird. What about Mac move or whack move? Buying a balloon when there's a global helium shortage. <laughs> that's that's actually true. <laughs> I mean, that's a whack move i think yeah. so helium is very useful. i'm not even going to comment on this one because is, i don't feel that, it, that there's a true distinction of what it is, is i mean there, i so, don't know i don't know how much money it takes to own a party store like i think it would be a it would be a <laughs> mac move if like you know if you could have your kids come over like you literally could have your kids party in the store i mean that sounds like a nightmare but you probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> but i'm just saying like little bobby Little Bobby Backlinks would go to school every day in a new costume. The teachers would hate it because dad, <laughs> daddy owns a freaking party party city or whatever that one's yeah. called. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My so, whole thing is this. I, don't, I, I, I can't even vote on it. I can't even give you anything on it because it makes no sense. But I would like to know. Um, I mean, obviously, this is the same thing. It's a retail problem. It's not a helium problem. It's a retail problem. You can order yeah. this crap off of off of Amazon. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Cheaper. Like, yeah. and those stores kind of smell. And they'll ship it. To and you. I'm gonna be smell, honest with you. Yeah. I'm not trying to be a jerk, so I apologize to all the people that work at these places. I'm sorry, but the staff there is never really that good. No, mm-hmm. you know, it never really works out so well. Yeah. It's Jimmy, always a very Jimmy's slow always process. missing. You know, he's missing a few fingers, and, and Whoa, Jesse. You well, know, I wouldn't she's really on her say fifth that. Marriage. I wouldn't she, really say that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. A, it's it's not a derby. comforting environment. It's not a Yankee candle. My 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 ah, biggest thing is, is what cool. is like going on candle. with the yeah. what is going on with the helium? Like why? Do you know any information about the helium? Uh, Seventy five percent of the world's helium comes from the U S. and uh, they use it in like MRIs. They use so it what happened? In, so what did Trump do to the helium? What did Trump did do to we, the helium? Do we get, does this have something to do with the trade? He inhales trade a bunch thing? of it and he gives no. speeches. Do we with China? Yeah. Does this have anything to do with the trade war that we're in right now? This helium problem. No, does it? It could. Well, you just said 75%. Sounds to me like China should be having the helium problem. Why? Because of the trade war, bro. If we're creating it. Yeah, China would have the helium problem, not us. Yeah, because we'd create 75% of it. Oh. I don't even know what people even use helium for. <laughs> like, what besides balloons? <laughs> That's it, I think, yeah. right? You use them in uh, computers to cool down computers. They also use them to, like, view uh, very, very small, like, atoms in the quantum realm and stuff. It's pretty cool. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And use it for gas I'm not, detection. I'm, I'm not even getting into that. You can use it to build a time machine. <laughs> That's what he basically <laughs> said. We yeah. just talked about the quantum, like, the quantum realm. <laughs> he just pulled Bro, some shit out of the uh, Endgame. You've been like, watching yeah, yeah. Endgame way too much. Well, the word quantum is here, so I just Let added me guess realm to let me guess that's in the back of a van yeah it's in the back of a van. <laughs> ant-man suit is made out of yeah. high, uh helium. all right i don't know i mean I, I, it's got to be a whack move it's, it's a whack it's a dying it's a business move. it's a dying business it's a whack move so, you know what i'm gonna say i'm gonna say that this topic is a whack uh, move. I was just, <laughs> i'm gonna say this topic that you selected for this on our that's first fair. ever mac move or whack move was whack. Yeah. So I have yeah, nothing yeah. to say about the party city. I feel bad for people that own party cities. Um, I feel bad for people that need helium in their lives and can't get it. Um, <laughs> I think it's I think it's a horrible, 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 sad tragedy. Yeah. Um, every time I go to Big Y, they don't seem to have a helium problem. They fill up my balloons right there on the spot. Yeah, with the tank. And it makes you happy. And, and I'm good. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm good to go. You're so. good. You know what, guys? We're going to start a GoFundMe page for all the you helium... Uh, the, the, you you people out there with uh, no helium, helium, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start a GoFundMe page. www.helium for you. All right, so Carlos, that's it, right? This is the last. How do you feel? Topics. How do you feel after your first program? Because we got to wrap up. We got to wrap this thing up. Um, I feel good. I feel swimming. <laughs> you know what's really funny is that we never had an intern in here to check the cameras, so we don't know if we're recording. So hopefully this all worked out. I mean, we know we're recording, but yeah. sometimes you know these cameras they magically just go off. I don't know. Yeah, why. this one's recording. Oh, sweet. Yeah. All right, well, so Chase, face. why don't you go ahead and uh, close us out, Chase, and give us, uh, give everybody our stuff, <clears throat> give everybody our handle, give everybody our, you know. Absolutely. Shout them out to Carlos on Instagram, give yeah. him his handle. Yep. Um, so thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, and if you like the Mac Talks, you like our content, go on iTunes, leave us a review, let us know how you feel. 
Um, go to www.themactalks.com to see uh, some of our beautiful blogs. Just to be clear, um, when you do go onto iTunes, let us know if you like our show. Don't tell us how you feel. So if you feel groggy, you feel a little <laughs> under the weather, we don't want to know about that. We okay. just want to know that you like our show. Just yeah, to be so clear. Let's clarify sorry. that. Sorry. Yeah, I sorry. To... Um, I'm, I'm just going off the dome with this. So uh, if you want to follow us on Instagram, it's at Mac Talks, M-A-C-K Talks. Uh, Facebook, just, fo- just, just search the Mac Talks. If you want to follow Scott or I, it's uh, at Chase underscore Hutchison underscore, and then it's at Scotty underscore content underscore. Carlos, you want to give him your handle? Oh, my handle is Carlos Can't Dance. Don't follow me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. So we're going to be closing out, and uh, until the next time. Peace. Later. Later.